Hey, welcome back. I'm Jana with Pearl Together. And in this week's technique video, I want to talk about steaking some more. In the last technique video last week, I talked and showed you how to do a crochet reinforced steak. In this week's video, I wanna talk about doing a steak with a needle felted reinforcement. So that's a technique where you don't have to sew anything, you don't have to know how to crochet, you're just needle felting your steak panel in order to mash all those fibers together and secure it. So I'll show you that in just a moment. Before I do though, I wanna give a big welcome and a public thank you to Leah and Janet. Thanks so much for joining me over on patreon.com. If you're interested in becoming a patron, you can head over there and see what I'm offering for a small monthly pledge, including patron-only knit-alongs, videos, different benefits. So go check it out at patreon.com forward slash pearl together. Okay, let's get started. All right, what we have here is a little fair isle swatch that I knitted in the round. And then I stuffed some cardboard in here. Um, because I want to show you how to do a needle felted reinforcement rather than a crochet reinforcement, which is what we did last last week. We did this video, this swatch, and we did a crochet reinforcement before we steeped or cut that apart. And so this week I've knitted another little swatch, and you can see where we're going to cut right in the center. This is just a three steek, three stitch steek, and you know preferably you'd want to have five or seven, but I did it three. Uh, because that's the same as what we've done for the current Maya Cardigan knit along. So I wanted to show you how it's possible to do this for that project. Ideally, you'll have a, a wider five or seven stitch steak. So again, just like last time, let me get my little scissors to point with. This is our target, our center target line where we're going to cut the horizontal strand between these V's. Okay, that's gonna be the goal here. So what I wanna do is needle felt this line of three columns. This width is what I want to needle felt in order to uh, mash all those fibers together and prevent any, um, any strands from coming loose. Now, knitting, as I mentioned before, does not unravel side to side, but it can pick loose over time. Um, but felting together would make that more sturdy also for picking up for a button band. So there's a couple things you can do. I've put the cardboard in here because needle felting is just like what it sounds. You have these needles. Um, let me get a, a different background so you can see. Okay, so this needle has little teeny barbs on it that will, when it's poked into the fabric, poked into the yarn, it tangles up the fibers and causes the felting. So this is just a single needle and you can totally do that and just start stabbing at it and that'll eventually felt it together. You can use one of these tools. This has uh, this has three needles on it, and that would also be a good choice. You can kind of see those little tiny barbs, maybe. I don't know if you can. There you go. So then I would take I would take this and you're just gonna start stabbing it in this column width. There's a spring inside here, and you wanna put a sponge or a piece of cardboard because when I do that, see it makes all those little holes, right? You don't wanna, uh, you can use a sponge. There's also needle felting mats that you can buy. I just don't happen to have one and I live too far from town. So I'm just gonna start jamming this in and eventually it will start felting together. So then you can also get these. These are five needle width and this says locked or unlocked. So let's unlock it, it has a little guard and when you mash down, then these needles come out, see? So that's also spring-loaded. And this is approximately the same width as my, as my column. So I'm gonna just start working at this. You carry on, keep doing that. Now that the front of this might still have some definition, but when we look at the back, it should start, after a little bit, it should start to look kind of fuzzy. So we'll keep on with this. We might have to use different sections of the cardboard since I don't have one of those special mat things. So I'm gonna keep on with this for a little bit and then we'll come back and check and see what it looks like. Um, it is advisable to block your swatch and weave in the ends first. All right, I mainly used this five needle one because it was approximately the same width as my column that I'm felting. And you can see my cardboard bit is pretty torn up. I probably did at least a couple hundred pushes for 
you know, as each area as I was moving up and then back down. I didn't count. But what I wanted it to look like was pretty fuzzy on the inside. See how that's all fuzzed up now? So that's pretty well fuzzed up. And although I have blocked this, I haven't woven in the ends yet, which probably you should do before you do this. But things are pretty well fuzzed up. I maybe could do a little bit more right there. Um, but yeah, that whole area is pretty fuzzy and felted together. So that's good. So now I'm going to go ahead and, and cut. And we'll see what this is actually going to look like and how the edge looks without doing any, you know, sewing reinforcement and just doing that dry needle felting. So I want to make sure that I have my target line coming down here and following all the way down to my edge. And I want to make sure that I've got my, my column in line here. And hopefully you can, you'll be able to see it better when I get to the, the lighter yarn, obviously. But here I'm going to just cut the, in between that stitch. And I'm going to pull it apart a little bit as I go so that I don't accidentally cut the V's of the stitch. But it is more difficult to pull apart after, you know, after you have felted it, obviously. So that's good because you don't, you know, you don't want it to pull apart easily, right? So I'm keeping on my line and I'm just cutting up the center of that V. Hopefully you can see that pretty well and cut right through your, there we go. Now, if you're concerned, see, you can see how the needle felting tangled up all those fibers on the edge and you can see how that's, that's going to be pretty well. And if you're concerned about it, I, at this point, you could always, you know, do a little more of that, do a little more of that felting if you wanted to right now. If you, were, if you felt like you hadn't done that enough, but you can definitely see how the fibers are tangled together there on the edge. So I like that. Um, I also like the, you know, covering that, if you're worried about it at all, you know, sewing that ribbon on there after you pick up your, your button band stitches. So yeah, that's interesting. That's a really interesting technique and way to go about it if you're not into sewing or crocheting. So just another option, just another thing to try and have in your toolbox. It's always good to have different options to try, different things that might work better for you than others. So feel free to leave a comment down below about what you think about this needle felting reinforcement technique for steaking. I definitely am going to try it on a future sweater. So I'd like to know what you think about it or if you've tried it, let me know how it worked out for you. So thanks for joining me as always and give me a thumbs up if you like these videos and find value here. Thanks so much for watching.